Today on the EMBN show, we're looking at the great all-rounders, e-mountain bikes that can do a little bit of everything. Now, kicking things off in our look into the great all-rounders is Specialized recently launched Turbo Tiro. Now, this is a mountain bike that you can use for commuting, and it's also a commuting bike which you can use for touring. 110 mil fork up front, 29 inch wheels, and an option of batteries from 530 watt hours to 710 watt hours. Now, great thing about this bike, Chris, is it comes with mounts, so you can have an additional child seat or a dog carrier or something to carry your panniers if you're going on a backpacking trip. It sounds perfect. In fact, I think it sounds like the ultimate crossover between their road sort of uh, e-mountain bike and their town bike, sort of an in-between bike. It literally can do a bit of everything by the sounds of it then. Yeah, now Specialized obviously do have bikes for everything. They have the, the Levo range for mountain biking. They have the Creo, which is a mix of a gravel and road bike, and also bikes such as the Vado, which are full on commuter bikes. So uh, it's very much a, an all round mountain bike, Chris, isn't it? So you can, you know, you can go out on your adventures riding single track and double track, but like our specialists say, you can use this for commuting as well. Yeah. Now, moving on from a bike that can do anything to a bike that has actually got everything. Now, this is the bike of Stuart Copeland. Actually, not Stuart Copeland, he's from the police, isn't he? This is Brad <laughs> Copeland, who is uh, Kate Courtney's chief engineer. Ch yeah. Chief engineer or mechanic. Quite interesting bike, this, Chris. Yeah, it's literally a rolling bike shop on wheels, this thing. As you mentioned, it's to support uh, Kate Courtney and all those tech pit stops. If she gets a problem on, on her bike, this bike will literally fix everything uh, you know that could possibly go wrong. And taking a look at this bike in detail. Air canisters. Yeah, air <laughs> canisters. So it's got a mini digital air inflation device in this, which is going to charge those tubeless canisters, which means that you know if she gets a flat or a blur on a stage, literally come in, bam, that tire will be straight up and that you know refreshes all the time. There's a massive toolbox on there, yeah. uh, two sets of spare wheels on there, wheel true and stand, it's got a beer cooler on there. I was going to say, you mentioned cool. refreshing as you ride. I mean, you can't get more refreshing than having uh, some beer on your bike. Yes, so that's for Brad, maybe at the podium, you know, after a bit of celebration for him and Kate, yeah. or just to keep those, you know, water and stuff cool as well. It's yes. the ultimate all-rounder. So to give you guys a bit of insight into Kate Courtney, Kate Courtney is a top-level cross-country mountain bike racer. Uh, and also, as you can see on the bike here, he's got a spare set of wheels on the back there. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? The amount of stuff that is literally on this. Totally custom bike, this. So it's a Scott uh, e-bike underneath this, powered by a Bosch Generation 4 motor. Got a custom paint job on that. I mean, look at it, it's absolutely stunning as and, well, isn't it? And a wheel truing stand. Yeah, so if you get to buckle on there, you know, not only are you going to be able to inflate tires literally in a bang, you can true those wheels up. Yeah. As I say, it's a bike shop on wheels. It's an amazing bit of kit. Now, from a bike that uh, is carrying wheels to a bike that's actually got two wheels up front, this is the Rungu bike. Yeah. And I'm really liking the action that it's involved in here. Very much a backpacking backcountry kind of hunter's bike, yes. you ask me. It's, that's what it's more sort of aimed at, is a hunting style of uh, riding and getting out there exploring. They say a lot of this is done on a, a quad or an ATV. So this is an electric version, basically, of a quad bike. So you can carry all your kit. Um, and yeah, 328 newton meters of torque available on this. 1,560 watt hours of battery, but it weighs 54 and a half kilos. Yeah, but Chris, if you think about it, if it's a hunting bike and you're carrying a bear back, I'm not saying you guys, you got shooting bears, but maybe carrying <laughs> a wild boar back, then a wild boar is going to be 200 kilos, isn't it? True, yeah, yeah. So it's maybe not such a bad yeah. thing, but... Uh, but it was interesting because do you see the, there was the um, the British military mm -hmm. uh, introduced mountain bikes, yeah. e-mountain bikes mm -hmm. in their range recently. Yeah, so I saw that. So it's some good crossover stuff, isn't it? But yeah, you got the, the Jeep. Now this, this final bike is the Jeep. Jeep. Now this comes in either a 750 watt or a thousand watt, a mm -hmm. uh, pretty significant bit of kit. Obviously, these bikes are only legal in certain parts of the world, certain yep. parts of maybe North America. Uh, but again, uh, some more of a hunting style bike. So. Yeah, so the uh, great thing about this is a collab with Quiet Cat, and they offer it in loads of different packages. So you've got like a hunter's package, fishing package, which involves like uh, rod holders, and then you get the adventure bike 
package, which involves, uh, well, it comes with like solar recharging options, um, loads of different battery sizes, 10 levels of assist on this bike. And again, it's got that Bafang Ultra motor on there. So it's not short of torque either to get you into yeah. some of those remote places. Yeah, so folks, let us know your thoughts on the Quiet Cat. I'm sure there'll be some comments around that. Um, but it's interesting, Chris, I think, you know, what, you know, an all-round e-mountain bike can actually do a lot of things. Yeah. Now, last mm -hmm. last year, we took specialized Vado up into the hills from the city to the summit. It's amazing where you can get to on an all-round mountain bike. Definitely. And, yeah, the versatility of these bikes is amazing. But guys, let us know your thoughts on what you think is the ultimate all-rounder. Now, hot off the press is news of some new e-mountain bike cleaning kits from Muckoff. But not only that, they have got a massive giveaway. Not just bottles of product, but a Lapierre e-mountain bike. Yeah, this is really cool what? news. So with the launch of their new range, they've also developed this game where you've got a wheelie chopper fielder for as long as possible. And the longest wheelie, as Steve mentioned, is gonna win that Lapierre E-Zesty bike and a year supply of muck off as well. So the kit as well is uh, pretty interesting stuff. Steve, yeah, well, as well, so isn't it? it's, it's a lot of kit and it's a lot of wheelie, but the kits come in two options. You've got the ultimate kit, which is $89.99, uh, and also the essentials kit. Um, a variety of cleaning lubes here for all different weather conditions. I'm interested in the CPL look, uh, uh, kit, though, Chris, which is uh, four clean, protect, and lube products. Yeah, so it's a must have, that is. So that's the, the basic stuff that you have to keep your e bike running. It's absolutely full to the brim. As you mentioned, those other kits have got a bit more stuff, a bit more lubes, a bit more uh, cleaning additives, and of course, all the associated brushes to go with them. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I think if there was one thing, if someone said to me, what's the one thing to get? Uh, improved performance out of your e man bike, I'd probably say that it's lube. Lube's got to be, hasn't it? A chain, degrease and cleaning that chain, I think is the ultimate yeah. thing when it comes to e bike. And of course, these kits have all that in there, even from that basic kit all the way up to that ultimate kit, which is designed for the avid e bike who's out there crunching the miles. Absolutely. And folks, if you're looking for some rags to uh, clean your excess lube off the uh, off your chain and off, off your wheels, then why not get rid of some of your old EMBN kit and replace it with some new stuff? Yeah, look now, at these. Now, I'm pretty jealous because I've not actually seen these <laughs> because I've been away for two months. Really like it, yeah, Chris. They're looking cool, aren't they? I like, you know, loving the colors. We've got new t-shirts, new hoodies. Let's have a look at the t-shirt. Oh, the new t-shirt Come on, well. get Come the t-shirt out. Here right, he goes, right. here he goes. No, get your the, top off. Oh, get my top get off. Get your top off. Can't get those out. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, look at these as well. Bien, so, bien. Yeah, looking good. So check out our merch shop if you want to check out all the new hoodies and t-shirts and yeah, get in there before Steve empties it out for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was actually only joking about turning the old tops into rags. Maybe, maybe give those to the charity shop or maybe give them to your nephews and nieces, the next generation of e-mountain bikers. Now this week on the channel, we've got a super important video, the all new Giant Rain E. It is an incredible bike and I was fortunate enough to have taken it into the mountains of Switzerland recently and also, maybe less fortunately, raced it at the EWS E in Finale. So there's a full check of that bike coming out on Sunday. But before that, on Friday, Chris, yeah, something more important as well. Seat in tubeless, all those little hacks to get those tires to sit on the uh, rim, get them to snap into place and get a load of air in your tires because it can be quite a struggle, can't it? You know, you I get your new tires on and you can't inflate them, so frustrating. Yeah. And also it is important to run your bike tubeless because uh, if you're in places such as your finale with like limestone rocks, increased sort of uh, chance of getting a pinch puncher, having a tubeless setup is vital to, to keeping the bike rolling uh, during the day. Mm -hmm. Right, it's time for some comments and questions from all the recent videos we've had here on EMBN. And of course, we've had some great coverage coming from all the e EWS races, which Steve has been at. And uh, in particular, this one from the Tweed Valley. We've got a good uh, comment in from Rob Haskins here. He says, it's great to see Sam Hill smiling. He, has he found his new place in the world? Why would anyone not want to explore new grounds? If your ego is looking for a trip, I suggest you give an e-mountain bike a proper long, hard, up and down the hill. 
It's not one or the other, but ride both e-mountain bikes and naturally aspirated mountain bikes to enhance the fun. It's simply evolution of uh, human thinking that allows us to enjoy life even more. And it was great to see Sam on that e-bike, wasn't it? At, uh, yeah. Tweed Valley. And it's good to see that Rob Haskins is very much an advocate of the E equals MTV squared. Uh, Sam Hill is smiling. He's uh, he's not had much time on his on his new proof mega, but he's proven that uh, he has got what it takes. Uh, obviously, when it comes to the uphill stages, maybe a bit of practice to do there, which is, comes into the next question, which is a comment from OBC, which says, hopefully next year, the EVC will have realized how stupid the power stage is and will do away with it. Um, it's well, quite a harsh comment, that, I think. Um, I'd be equally harsh in my, re in my reply, and I'd say it actually adds another dimension to racing. It actually makes e-mountain biking a yeah. proper race in itself. Otherwise, it'll just be, it's not, it's not just a downhill race. No, exactly. And I think, uh, I think Tweed Valley was quite a bad, like the, the power stages, I think, you know, Rich was out there and a lot of people were saying that you couldn't climb up them, but I guarantee you that there would be some people that would get a lot further up those hills than others. And that's just the different element coming to it. I think, yeah. you know, we see people with trial skills and downhill skills, cross country power coming into it. And yeah. it's just a great mix up, I think. I think mud is, is where the real mm -hmm. skill lies when, yeah, it comes exactly. to, when it comes to riding an e-mountain bike. I think we would e have seen you going up there, sat down doing the Jones technique all the way <laughs> to the top of those power stages. Uh, funny actually, someone did comment that, uh, yeah, sat down is the way to get up those climbs. I mean, yeah. and you do see some pros yeah. who think they can ride e-mountain bikes, but obviously you've got no idea when it comes to technique. Seat up here, over yeah. the back, wheel in the air. Yeah. You need to get your center of gravity down low, don't Slam you? Slam that seat. I can see you on a fresh Max's, uh, Max's shorty climbing up there. Wet scream. With the wellies on. Wet scream, I think, <laughs> gonna climb like that. <laughs> and it's interesting to see you know, Nico Vulios, you know, he, he's, you know, OBC, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's fair enough, that's that's what your, what your thoughts are on it, but when you look at the likes of Nico Vulios, who lowers his tire pressures just to do the power stage, really? the technical element to this stage is actually amazing. The ultimate pro. Yeah. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I think I don't think we want to see a sport of jockeys, but no. um, at the same time, I think it, it does enhance the sport Definitely. a great deal. So yeah, some interesting comments there on e uh, e racing. It's going to be interesting to see how the sport develops in the yeah, next few years. It's Certainly, it's a younger, you know, younger days for it, isn't it? So it's great to see how it's evolving all the time. You know, every year has been different. So yeah, super exciting. But folks, uh, keep getting involved in the comments on e mountain bike racing. Uh, it's it's great to hear your different perspectives. Right, it's time for some sends and fails of this week's show, and we have got some absolute belters, and kicking it off, we've got Gerardo here, having a bit of a look down a trench. Now, what do you think to this, Steve? It almost looks like, I don't want to say it looks like almost deliberate, but obviously uh, it's not. It's a, it's a big old fall. He's out in Chile, uh, falling down a massive trench. Gerardo, it's an absolute cracker. <laughs> absolute cracker. <laughs> and next up, we've got Ian here, who's one of our regular contributors here on EMBN. He's up at the Black Mountain Cycle Centre, running a little bit wide on one of these berms and checking out the ferns. Uh, one of the biggest thorny bushes, he says, uh, ever. So overcooking it a little bit here. But uh, coming a bit of redemption here, he's absolutely sending the full moto line here. It gets massive air, and I know how big those jumps are as to you, Steve, down that big line. Um, yeah, keeping it smooth, adding a bit of style, and great to see you going top to bottom on that line. Big props, and as always, keep all that content coming in using the upload service. And the details for that are up on screen now. Be careful, it's a dangerous old game, guys. <laughs> dangerous old game. <laughs> Now, having been out and about for the past two months, it's great to catch up with you guys. And uh, I have to apologize for not being uh, part of the out and about scene on uh, the show for the past few months. But like I said, look, when you see stuff like this, mm -hmm. really, I mean, this is Flo out in Zermatt. I mean, that is a banging shot there. It's amazing, uh, isn't it? And followed by something closer to um, one of the terrible disasters recently at La Palma. Now, this is, uh, Peter out in Tenerife on uh, Mount Tidy, or should I say Tier Day. Um, and then more of a sort of um, lowland shot here. This is Karen on uh, White Even 50 in Lismore Island, exploring the island on a day trip. Um, and look, I really like this to you, Chris. This is taken uh, up in Norway, Norway, and with Richard and his jam 6.7. Look at that. yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful sunset shot, isn't it? Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? But check out this final shot as well from uh, 
from Dylan. From Dylan, yeah. Loving that sort of 360 view on there. It makes his bars look a bit funky. It looks like a bit of forward rise going on on his bars. But So this yeah. is Dylan on his Marin Alpine Trail E2 uh, up in Wardle, Lancashire. Waited 12 months for this bike to arrive. My first ever ride to test out the range. 40 miles, 4,000 feet of climbing Ooh. and still some battery left. Nice. Love it. Thanks, folks, for your out and about. Like I said, I really missed catching up with what you've been doing uh, and some inspirational action and locations. Okay, guys, it's time to glass up and cast our critical eyes over the bike fault. Start off with Simon and his Voodoo Zubop E in Glossop. And uh, what a fantastic, reasonably affordable bike, the, the Voodoo, isn't it? Yeah, they have a, good, a lot of good following, don't they? Good write-ups, good reviews, and uh, yeah, I see a lot of them here on EMBN. Does so. it showcase the bike, though, Chris, is the question, or is it not about that? I think it is, and... Um, it's on the edge, that. I think it's I think it's a nice shot. It is a nice non-drive side and clipping out that back wheel. I, I don't think it matters about non-drive side, but... Or what about this side? Scott? What about this Scott from Guy? <laughs> the Scott Stride. Think of them, so it's a nice for that first view to zoom up, was it? Yeah, okay. with the Scott Stride. Scott cuts Stride. Off the, cuts off the back wheel there. And there's another non-drive side shot. It School, doesn't matter. Schoolboy, it's Schoolboy, it's a nice shot. And I think the next shot from Richard, Specialized Turbo Levo, uh, in NSV. I'm sorry, Rich. But um, my focus there is on the wind turbine. Wind turbine, and not the bike. I thank God we had you for that Welsh pronunciation on that, Steve. And it's the. But I think this next shot from Richard on the the white E150 RS, fantastic bike. Yeah. Uh, South Downs near Midhurst. Um, it's it gets lost a little bit, but really makes me think. Yeah, I'm gonna go and ride that bike in the woods. It's gonna be a super nice. Super nice for sure. Super nice. And what about this then? This is in West Java, Indonesia. I mean, it's super nice. It is. Yeah. Is that like a volcano going on in the back? You see that steam in the top left? Yeah. Some smoke coming out. Yeah. Nice. Is it smoke or is it steam, Chris? Steam. Anyhow, it's a super nice shot. And likewise, this is nice. Enzo. Chris, I'm, I'm I. I I'm loving the colour on this. It is. It looks like, is it like an oil slick or is it just like the grey? I can't really tell from this uh, oh, shot. Oh, you have the bike, it's not with the corn in the background. Oh, the corn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's oil slick, isn't it? It is. It's, nice it's got to be. It's got to yeah, be. Super nice for sure. Super nice. Well, yeah. check out this. And this is Richard. He's got a high bike. Not Richard. Seven. There's a lot of yeah. Richards in this week's bike vault. Uh, out in Lake should, Windermere. Should we do our bike vault based on, on name? On name. Richard's bike vault. Uh, they have the Smith vault. <laughs> exploring the lakes with my brother and friends. First e-bike, uh, loves the EMBN shirt and even loves Steve Jones. Look at that. Didn't, uh, say, didn't say that. It's got, the, it's got a bit of sleeve going on on the down tube. Didn't uh, say that. <laughs> keeping it nice and warm, keeping that battery. You know, look at all the different stuff going on this bike. Real much better than car. Looks like a right cruising setup. That's a super nice for sure. Uh, and then finally on this week's bike vault is Magnus and the Orbea Rise M10 in Swedish Lapland. Now, I'm guessing maybe a lack of light there. Maybe it's... A, what it's is nice. in the background? It looks like the bottom of the chair. Is it like a ski lift? Like the or a pylon? Ski? Pylon, yes. It's just a bit of a... Uh, I mean, if that bike was just with the sun, the beautiful yeah. sunset there, yeah. I think it's, it's nice, natural. isn't it? Yeah, it's quite industrial, that shot. But what are you thinking for bike of the week then, Stephen? Bike of the week for me... Yeah, I'm just going back through them. Is... No, it's on you, Chris. I'm liking that white, I think, out in the forest from Richard, surprisingly. Richard, you've got bike of the week. There's a nice shot out in the South Downs, uh, South Downs near Midhurst. South Downs. Yeah, lovely looking bike, that. Makes me want to go ride, for sure. But keep them coming, use that upload service for Bike Vault or anything you want to see on the show. Get it into us and it could be you on next week's show. And that's it from this week's show. Thanks uh, for watching. Uh, let us know your thoughts on all-round e-mountain bikes. What does it for you? Is it the fact you can carry a bear or a fishing rod, a gun, <laughs> uh, a young child or a uh, tow your dog? Or maybe you don't need either of those. You just need a bike that you can commute in and you go ride in, in the mountains on or you can use as a tourer. Mm -hmm. Let us know your thoughts. And we'll see you next week. Cheers.